Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is LeCharles and we're so glad you could join us. But before we begin, let us open up in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for today, Lord, and we just thank you that you have constantly given us all that we need, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that you only bless us with good, Lord, for that's all that you can give. Lord, we also just thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge that you have given us, Lord. And Lord, we just take the time to accept and receive it, Lord, and to apply it. And we just thank you for your Holy Spirit as well. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. So glad to have you with us as we dive into the Word, continuing our study of the book of Zechariah. This morning we are in chapter 6, still going over verses 1 through 8. So whether you're joining us for the first time or rejoining us, I want to encourage you to just take a moment and pause the episode Read through that section of scripture to make things easier to follow along in the discussion. Amen. 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 All right. And now the floor is open to give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and ask any questions that you have. So who'd like to begin? I would. All right, LaCharles. Okay. The first thing that the Lord was speaking to me was um, when he sent out these horses, they were supposed to give rest to the spirit that we can infer that from verse eight. And he called to me and spoke to me saying, see those who have, see those who go towards the North country have given rest to my spirit in the North country. And the Lord was just, he asked me a question and I thought it was um, interesting. He was asking me when this occurred. Was this before they came back? Which we know the answer is no, but it was after they, came, they had already come back and they already mm-hmm. began to rebuild the temple. And I was just asking what was the relevance of that, like the significance, if that makes sense, of when these horses were sent out to give rest to the spirit. And the Lord was reminding me of um, oftentimes, and you especially see it in the book of Nehemiah more than any other, you see that they still had a process to do. And as we've been talking about, it wasn't just smooth sailing. They still had to continually trust in the Lord and continue to persevere against what was coming against them. And they had to have their faith and trust inside the Lord. And so he was telling me that it was significant that he sent them out now. And he reminded me, I've, I've asked the Lord this question a few times. I'd ask why he would allow certain things to, like certain trials to come my way. I expected, I said, Lord, you should just essentially let me go on and I should be driving down a smooth road. There should be no potholes. <laughs> I, that's how I thought of it. That was my concern. It would be nice, right? Yes, that's how I um, thought of it in my mind, and that's how I, um, I won't say thought of it. I can't think of the right word I wanted to say right there, but. Your, it was your expectation, and it yes. was your desire. Oh, amen. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord was showing me that there is an um, aspect of he allows certain trials to come our way, first of all, when we're ready for it. Second of all, to not prove, but to let us see what we are able to do, and that we're able to go against something. In the regard of, I specifically for me, the Lord will keep bringing the same similar trial over and over and over and over until I finally get over it. Well, let's understand a couple of things about the Lord, right? First, He doesn't even allow you to be tempted beyond what you were able to bear. So in other words, you already have the, within you, what's been poured into you by the Lord through Holy Spirit. You already have what you need to pass the t- the trial, the test, or whatever it is, right? Yes. Notice even as Layla brought up with Daniel, right? When when were they shown to be 10 times wiser than all their peers? Tested. When tested. Oh, when tested. Okay. So in other words, they passed with flying colors. And when we don't pass, right? It's not on the Lord. It's on us. That just means we haven't fully submitted, right? We've not been perfected in love yet, right? Yes. So it's still a something that we must do. We must pass, right? Hopefully we can do that without going around the mountain for 40 years, right? Or being wandering the wilderness, just going in circles essentially for 40 years, right? But rest assured, we still need to pass 
those things. Being refined or being conformed to the image of Jesus, right? Yes. Uh, he is and was and is God, yet he was still tested, right? Yes. So, so it's not that we won't be tested. It is that understand he's already given you what you need to overcome. Will we overcome, right? Yes. Now, please continue. And then, so he would keep bringing it over until I finally was able to successfully pass it in the regard of I chose to pass it. That's there right. There you go. And mm-hmm. then, so the Lord was, um, then he brought me to Zechariah, I believe it's chapter one. And this is where he's talking about the four horns that scattered. And he reminded me of there was a time and a season for all of it. There was a time and a season for the horns to scatter. And mommy, you brought this up and you see this, especially in the book of Daniel, where he said there was a time for the prince of Persia. There was a time for the prince of Greece. There was a time mm-hmm. for all these nations to come up. And that's what uh, you read um, in the last episode Layla, about the statue. There was a time and a season for all these various kingdoms. It moved down from the head to the all the way to the feet. And the Lord was showing me that this is what was occurring as well. Because I also asked him, how come it doesn't say that um, peace was achieved in the south? If that makes sense. He specifically says they have given rest to my spirit up in the north country and we know he has sent down multiple and the lord was um remind me of i believe this is ezekiel chapter 16 but when he was going in and talking about the adultery that they committed one of the keen ways they had done so was by putting their trust not in god but the nations that surrounded them which goes back to the horns and how it was the things that they hold held dear to themselves and that we're going to be the savior against God. They thought we we're going to push back against God and we're going to be victorious over what God said. And then those things that they put their trust in became their fetters. Mm-hmm. Yes. The bondage and the thing that ultimately destroyed them, their life, their blessing and their promotion and progress towards good. Yes. And which the Lord has shown me that, um, he reminded me of how mo- oftentimes inside of scripture it says down south referred to Egypt. Like when it said Abraham went to the south country or he told Isaac, don't go down to the south. Mm-hmm. That was their place that he was referring to most times in the okay. south. And the Lord was reminding me of they had just come out of exile from um, Babylon. They had just come back from that. And the period they were looking at in Zechariah? In the period that we're looking mm-hmm. At in Zechariah, they had just come back from one exile, and the Lord was showing me that there was an um, aspect of they had to deal with everything that was inside of the way, and he reminded me of uh, Joshua, where it said, "I'm rolling away the what reproach, it, the reproach of Egypt, mm-hmm. and how they held it in their hearts, and that was a place that they would not, they would retreat to. They thought that's where it was good for them. Mm-hmm. They didn't think the Lord was out was." seeking their good they thought he was going to harm them and egypt was the place of salvation for them essentially now even the though lord, in actuality it was a place of slavery um massacre brutality absolute bondage for 430 years right mm-hmm. but yet they and would savagery still, towards them but yet they would still mm-hmm. run there you see it in jeremiah right and other places as well where he yes. says hey don't go down there and then another i'll say point right it talks about the, the queen of the south or the queen of Sheba, right? With Solomon in his day, right? Yes. But it says that she would stand up in condemnation at the judgment because she went to Solomon. She sought out the wisdom of Solomon and not just early, uh, worldly, earthly wisdom, right? But the wisdom he received from the Lord. It's also yes. what you see with the... Um, well, back, oh, not back, but in Acts, right? Where you have uh, Philip, I believe, with the, the Ethiopian eunuch, right? Yes. Which was already written about in Isaiah. So I mean, that's what he was reading. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's what he was reading. Now, he was there as an envoy, clearly. But he sought out the wisdom. He was also looking for someone to explain it to him in Acts. But you see the same thing, right? Yes. They continually tried to go down south, but those in the south, some were seeking the Lord. Yes, Dan. 
and how the lawyers reminded me of that they had to deal with it in the entirety. And he reminded me of oftentimes since I my own life, I would um, approach some, something and say, okay, this way didn't work. Okay, that way north may not have worked, but south might be the answer to do what I wanted <laughs> to do. That's how And previously. actually what you were saying, here's one pathway of sin. That failed. Okay, plan B, pathway of sin. It wasn't really that you were turning your heart to the true north, to God, and going, Lord, <laughs> let me, your will mm-hmm. be done, right? You were saying, I'm going to sin. Okay, okay, let's just get that on the table. But I'm going to try to augment and alter my sin because this blatant pathway didn't work. Okay, so I'll try skipping on one foot and hopscotching over here. Trying to figure out the best way to do it. Right, but it wasn't a true, Lord, I'm sorry. Let me just do what you want and go purely towards what he wanted. Not only was the desire more than likely a sinful desire, you couldn't ride Jesus' buggy to your sinful desire. So naturally, you wanted to take Satan's buggy to your <laughs> desire. So you rode and you got on one and it, you fell off in the dirt and got scraped up. And you said, hmm, scratched your head. Something about that didn't work. Let's try it again. So you got on an even worse buggy and tried to navigate by calculating and trying to anticipate and still make it to that sinful destination by your sinful methods. And it's not just you, my love. Yes, That's my all, it's all humanity. Kamisha is included in that or has been included Absolutely. in that. Not now, because I just stay what I'm, I've been scraped up enough. Okay. <laughs> I want to just go on with Jesus. That's right. I just go on with Jesus and I no longer want the sinful desire, which I believe that's what you're saying. I no longer yes. want the sinful desire. Neither do I want to take the sinful path to try to get to said desire because I think God won't give it to me. And you're absolutely right. God is not going to deliver the curse into your life. Yes. As as long as you are obedient. No. And then even that, it's not God delivering the curse into anybody's life. They deliver it. That was your sinful desire. Each man is tempted when they're drawn away by their own lust, not God's lust. That's what I was saying. Back to Leviticus 26, Mm Jeremiah 28, the blessings of obedience. Amen. You you experience none of the curse. But make it known that God is not delivering you, giving you a ride to the curse. Period. Yes. If you end up in the curse, it's because you desired it and you took the pathway to get there. You walked, you you swam, you boated, you rode a train, you took an airplane, you did whatever you had to to get to it. And that's just the plain fact of it. God does not roll anybody into sin because why would he contradict himself? He did all this to bring us life and life more abundantly through Christ. He's not contradicting himself. Yes. Okay. And then so when I understood that and when I understood what the Lord was trying to speak to me and was saying that it was also a test for them. Were they going to try to return to the things that they had known, what they thought was better for God? They trusted God to get them out of the first captivity, but were they willing to go back into the captivity of sin later on? And that's something that you see even um, inside the Gospels of how they reverted back. You, um, at that point, it was the second temple that they were still in. They mm-hmm. didn't understand and worship God understanding that God was not the temple. Mm -hmm. God was, uh, he said, you, my name will be in there, but he didn't say my name is temple. If that makes sense. Correct. I understand. And see, and you see how they reverted back to the mindset that ended up in the captivity the first time. And it resulted in the destruction of the second temple. So you see them going through the same cycle over and over. Sure. It was different people who did, um, destroy it the second time. And that's what the Lord was referring to he said okay you guys have dealt with this one good but you have to make sure the process is complete there's no half dealing with it and saying lord i don't want sin in that form i don't like my sin cold i prefer it hot (laughs) well dealing with it Mm -hmm. matters right not just uprooting it from your life but then there's also as we see here with the mountains again right they are bronze there are consequences to disobedience right so yes. that must be, the whole thing must be dealt with to include those consequences. And can the Lord bring about a deliverance instantly? Yes, he can. And oftentimes we end up making it difficult. And then it takes time to undo the things that we have done or released in the earth. Right, those consequences of our disobedience mm-hmm. to the Lord. So... Again, the Lord had already removed the wickedness, right? We saw that in chapter 5, in the vision of the woman in the basket, right? 
Yes. So the sin was removed. And now there's also, yes, insight, but also an encouragement and admonishment of these things are here and they must be dealt with. Right? Yes. That is in these things. The consequences of disobedience are still there in the earth and must be dealt with. And, you, and we must choose to go through the entirety of the process with the Lord. Right? Yes. Releasing his goodness, his glory here on the earth and receiving those blessings of obedience. And so I'd like to focus on a slightly different point inside of um, this vision. This is, of course, I believe the last vision inside of Zechariah. And so the Lord was showing me the importance of the fact that Zechariah was participating within the vision. And we see that Zechariah had to ask, what are these, my Lord, in order to be told what they were. He wasn't just given the download and he suddenly knew what was happening. And we see, and so the Lord was reminding me of how that sometimes in my life I had um, thought about when the Lord was going to tell me to do something. He was going to give me, he was going to practically show me everything, show me all of the entirety of it. And then he was going to come upon me like Samson. And then I'd be walking it out um, as in he'd be overshadowing me and moving me like a puppet mm -hmm. to do his will which we see is incorrect here mm -hmm. and we see the importance of the fact that Zachariah was continually asking the Lord what was happening because it enabled the Lord to minister to the people and so the Lord was reminding me of how it's a lesson for ourselves to instead of being satisfied with less or expecting him to come upon us to um, first have our mindset to the fact of, of course, we're going to have to do some work in order to have his will brought about instead of him trying, instead of him moving us around like puppets, mm -hmm. which is ultimately going to show our um, our love for him, which we're going to see inside of chapter 7, um, talking about obedience. And also we see inside of, I believe, First Tam Samuel when Samuel was talking to Saul, and Samuel said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I believe disobedience is as witchcraft, and stubbornness as, no. Let me just flip there. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah. Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heath and the fat of rams. For rebellion is as, is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Mm -hmm. And I'll stop there. And so, the Lord was reminding me of how that our actions have ramifications for other people, mm -hmm. and how for a lot of these visions, the bulk of it came after Zechariah asked. And so if Zechariah had been expecting God to give him a download, and had not been willing to ask or go the extra mile, then also we would have seen. We also would see that the Lord wouldn't be able to use Zachariah completely, and the same applies for our lives. Are we hindering the Lord because we're expecting Him to download to us or move us about as a puppet? Hmm. And are we preventing other people from going because of our own stubbornness? Hmm. And that was it. Amen. That. Ask, seek, and knock is an important and mandatory step in our relationship with the Lord. He put it there for a reason, and he means it and meant it. So mm -hmm. taking the opportunity, like, I guess sometimes we fail to see God's motivation in things, and we are properly um, allocate and understand his motivation. He wouldn't have come to Zechariah if he didn't want to share information with him, right? But he yes. also has a requirement. This is a, a principle and a concept and a foundation of the kingdom that you ask, seek, and knock. And then he will respond by answering, right, opening, and allowing you to find what it is that you're seeking, right? So understanding the ways of the kingdom is such a benefit 
to us as believers because we stop trying to make God come into our plane and do things the way we think they should be done in our limited, I wouldn't even call it wisdom, but carnal nature and silliness, foolishness. And then we can come into his plane and go, oh, this is how you operate, Lord. I will willingly cooperate with you. And then look what blessing comes as a result of us applying his concepts in our life. Amen. Well, there's a lot in there, so we're going to pause there for today. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right. Charles? Lord, we just thank you for today, Lord. We just thank you that you have given us the choice, Lord. And Lord, we just thank that you have given us the Holy Spirit, Lord, to let us know which one is the right choice, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that you always accept us, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you continue to give us wisdom on how to apply what you have said to us, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that you speak to us in the first place, Lord, that we are counted worthy enough of you to use your time on us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.